All right, we are back. Got an early morning shave, and we have our breakfast stout glass out, so you know that means drinking some coffee. We're doing the max shaves today. So, we got some Father Michaels, and this is the Kenya Pea Berry, and it says sweet, delicious berry, medium light over here. This package is almost gone. Father Michaels is from my hunting grounds in Goldendale, Washington, and it's pretty good shit. I've had about four different blends, and I do like it. This one is somewhat delicate. I drink it black with just like a smidge of sugar in the raw, and um, it's some pretty good shit. An easy drinking coffee, not going to blow you down or anything like that, but yeah. it's um, it's good stuff. has a nice flavor. All right. We're going to be doing some Southern Witchcrafts Samhain, and that, of course, is the Pumpkin Sandalwood Bourbon and Tobacco. Awesome label. Wish they had a side label, though, but definitely an awesome top label right there. A lot going on. <clears throat> God, that's good. It's a softer um, soap. And it's bold and banging. Beautiful scent. Um, this is for holiday shave week. So we're going to keep that going. This one is warm and dark and gourmand in my opinion. Because it smells good enough to eat. And... Um, that's good enough for me. It, um, I think it's kind of like pumpkin pie in the sense that it's, it's more, you know, somewhat natural rather than pumpkin pie where it's like, or pumpkin spice where it's like really sweet. Um, this is more like natural pumpkin and then like, you know, kind of vanilla from the bourbon and it, it just kind of gets rounded out with the tobacco. It's really, really nice stuff. Probably um, on par with the uh, Staggering Jack, which is kind of in the same realm. Got my Bullseye Brushworks right there. Beautiful dark purple handle. And Southern Witchcrafts is still my favorite... Um, Vegan soap base. Fantastic uh, lather gets made from this. Really good shit. The scent on this one is probably a um, six or seven. It's bold. It's banging. Sweet. But not overly sweet. It's just that kind of natural, natural pumpkin sweetness. I identify it kind of like, there's not too many pumpkin things. So I identify it more with like pumpkin pie rather than pumpkin spice. But it. The scent has some sweetness to it, but it's not overly sweet. And I think it's grounded by the sandalwood. And then that bourbon, which probably adds the uh, vanilla and additional sweetness. But it doesn't come across as overly sweet. At least not for my taste. People who um, aren't fans of gourmand scents might think this is too sweet, but not for my taste. Okay, that is a good looking leather in my estimation. We got the charcoal goods. Let's see if I can line it up for you. Hold on to it in a fashion that I don't cut myself. We got charcoal right there, and this is actually level two. 
I don't think that says level two. It's like, a, oh, it does. It does say level two. Charcoal Goods level two. Got a Wizomat blade in here. Let's get with it. <clears throat> oh, I guess I should mention Alpha Outlaw Handle. Alpha Shaving Company. Picked that up at Bull Goose. Excellent razor handle. It's um got top notch knurling, and as you saw, it's pretty much knurling from top to bottom. And it's a uniform width, so there's no crazy um, like skinnier sections that might not meld well with your personal way of gripping a razor. It's uniform in thickness and knurling the whole way down so it just kinda no matter where you lay your fingers you're gonna get some grip I know some people say I've <laughs> no matter what razor they've used they've never had a razor go flying out of their hands and um that may be true, but the added bit of grip can be appreciated whether or not you've ever dropped a razor. That was a damn fine first pass. Can't go wrong with, um, Southern Witchcrafts on a performance basis. This is probably one of the easier scents to like from them. And I'm not saying that in, in a bad way in any stretch of the imagination. But I feel like you have to have somewhat of an open mind. An open mind, excuse me. When using Southern Witchcrafts from a fragrance perspective... Because they do throw some curveballs at you and kind of push the envelope when it comes to um, their scent building. And so I have a soap from them. It might be lys Lysanthropy. And it had mildew as a scent note. And you can perceive mildew. But the way they pulled it off, like it was just like a fresh, clean scent. <laughs> And it's not like mildew is like up front and center, but that kind of sharp, you know exactly what mildew smells like, that sharp scent, they built around it and created, you know, a clean, fresh fragrance. Now, some people will think, impossible. <laughs> no way to make mildew smell good. They fucking pulled it off. And that's not the only, that's not the only one. Um, it's not coming to my head right now, but they've, um, they've definitely pushed the envelope with their scent notes. They definitely have some other weird ones that <laughs> might be like, um, brow raising and whatnot. Kind of, <laughs> when you first look at it, you're like, how the fuck? <laughs> How the fuck can you make something that smells good out of that? But rest assured, they, they're pretty good at their, um, or I should say she is pretty good at her scent building. And I haven't had one that I don't like yet. I'm sure, I haven't tried their whole lineup, but I'm sure something wouldn't hit, but... Normally, I'm a pretty big fan of Southern Witchcrafts. I like the fact that they push the envelope with their um, fragrances. 
I believe they are 100% all original. I don't think they have any dupes. So that's something to be proud of. And they are super, super high quality as far as a vegan leather goes. I mean, this is like dense, creamy, slick. Nothing to complain about on a performance basis. Residuals on point. I think they um may possibly offer sample sizes. But if not, um I think Maggard Razors does. Maggards. And so you could kind of like try your hand at Southern Witchcrafts before diving all the way in. And I, I wouldn't blame you if you did so. Because you never want to get something, you never want to get a full puck of something and then just be like, damn, I hate. <laughs> so I, w I definitely wouldn't blame you if you did. But, I'll tell you right now, keep an open mind. Try to live with it for a little while. And what I mean by that is, like, give it multiple chances. Live with it for a while. Give it the opportunity to grow on you. And then... You just might find something about it clings to you. And it might even widen your, you know, your, your own personal library of scents that you have in your, in your memory bank. And then you'll end up being like, you know, a big fan of Southern Witchcrafts, possibly. And because... You expanded your kind of um, your taste in fragrance. That opens the door to liking so many other, you know, fragrances that you didn't like in the past. It's always good to kind of double back after some time has um, went by and kind of sniff a few soaps that you didn't um, that you didn't like originally and see if you're a uh, preferences have changed because while they were in the back of the back of the cupboard collecting dust and you've picked up 20 new soaps with you know a hundred new fragrance notes combined between them you know that slow evolution of your memory bank and all those um, scent notes you might find that some of those scents that you didn't like last year or two years ago, they uh, might actually be appealing to you now. Which is something that happens to me all the time. Which is why if I don't like a soap, I don't offload it. I just put it in the back. Put it in the back of the shelf and revisit it because... Once time goes by, about like 80 to 90% of the time, I end up liking that scent that I didn't like originally. I mean, it is like a shocking, a shocking amount of like turnover. Something just clicks, like it's hard, it's hard to explain, but it's like you've had so many experiences in between that 
incrementally each one changes your overall preference and then when you revisit something there you might be able to discern something that you couldn't before you couldn't maybe you couldn't put your uh, couldn't put a word to it or couldn't put a um, a memory to that scent note you couldn't you know describe it but after you've had so many more experiences now you have something to pull back from and say hey that smells like this soap or it smells you know I could pick up a little bit of this soap and this other soap and you have something to pull back on after many many new experiences and you find son of a bitch <laughs> I never thought I'd like this soap but it's actually all right anyhow that was a fucking damn fine shave. We're going to finish off with some St. James from Murphy and McNeil. Not the same scent, but definitely both in that kind of like warm, sweet, gourmand genre. Quality restrictor on top. <clears throat> no bullshit restrictor on that one. A little bit goes a long way with this guy. I'm going to be smelling... Like a snack for probably <clears throat> 12 hours. <laughs> and this is an aftershave. Like, I could not even imagine <laughs> buying the uh, EDT uh, at all. <laughs> this stuff lasts for ages. And I'm only applying more <laughs> to... Uh, get some more coverage on the neck and cheeks because I definitely don't need any more power from this uh, aftershave. It is bold and banging indeed. Alright guys, that's it for me. I hope you had a good Saturday um, and have a good rest of your weekend. Cheers, and I will catch you guys on the next one for the final holiday soap week shave.